space. Cooper getting in line, cuts him across and touched down! The show press! But look at the positioning of Michelle, Michelle Cooper. She just keeps herself wide and allows her to get some momentum, faced up 1v1, and then twists and turns. Does that touch right there against the front foot of Casey Kruger that allows that space to open up right there? Big touch, gets her head up, and then Michelle Prince in the exact spot, the wrong side of Mickey Young, just to get that little touch in first to send it to the far post, and Kansas City up 1 0. And did that touch off Mickey Young? But this is exactly what this Kansas City team's going to be looking for. Just sitting back and dancing space. Labonta on the attack. Labonta! Labonta just the angle once again in between the lines. Picks it up. No one steps. Trini Robbins coming back. Then Casey Kruger. I mean, what a finish this is. Uses the screen of the defenders. Sees the space right here. Goes herself. No one stepping. And then right there at the last second, it's Butel. Uses that screen and Mickey Young just to tuck it into that far post. Kingsbury screen. She's trying to get the push off at the last second. But it's played so perfectly from Lola Bata to make it 2-0. Creates a little bit more separation in this scoreline. Shawinga in transition. Bia joins. Sullivan arrives. Bia through to Bina! Across Shawinga scores! What a birthday gift from Shawinga! It starts with DiBernardo Di making the play on the other end. Allows them to go on transition. And then here's the combination play that we've been looking for. Shawinga, Bia, Dabinia, everybody getting into the mix. That's great work from Dabinia. Rounds her defender, plays it back into the path of Shawinga, and then just makes no mistake about it. Third goal of the night for the Kansas City Current. First for Shawinga. And what a game this is in front of their home fans. Given the Washington Spirit a little taste of their own medicine that they felt a month ago. Orlando trying to get ahead here in the late moments. Banda! At all, it's a great ball in from Carson Pickett. Barbara Banda does such a good job at getting in between the back line, and it was the one moment they switched off. Could Caitlin Roden have done a little bit better? Got a stronger hand, I'm not quite sure. Get something on it. But it's Barbara Banda in between. The back line, such a good header. And I feel for this Bay FC team because it's been a really complete performance from them. But you cannot switch off. You cannot sleep on these types of players, Jen. Brianna Pinto making those smart runs off the back line, inverting into a central position in the midfield. Obviously covering a lot of ground, but Ashley Sanchez using her speed and skill. Back to Pinto, and Pinto scores. North Carolina takes the lead. And it's Pinto who makes the initial movement, drags Abby Ursig out of possession, out of position. And then again, the patience between the center backs. Ryan William gets her head up. She sees Ashley Sanchez making that run in between the fullback and the outside back. Sanchez gets her head up, gets Abby Ursig down to ground, commits her, and that leaves space for Brianna Pinto to make those late ghosting runs into the midfield. Such composure in front of goal. It's just an easy tap in past Katie Lund. Courtney Peterson. Used the left foot that time. That's her favorite one. That's she is coming in and ties the game. What a mistake by North Carolina. Maybe their first. It's 1-1. Ralph unnerved here by the presence of Sears. Peterson gets her head up, looks for the long ball over the top. Rao has position, lays it back to the goalkeeper to be able to clear it on one, gets the tempo of that pass all wrong, and that is, provides an opportunity for Emma Sears to pick off this pass. Rounds the goalkeeper here, such composure. Sees Casey Murphy coming off her line very aggressively, rounds the goalkeeper, finds the equalizer, and it was always going to be 13 in purple, Emma Sears, to put racing on the scoreboard. On the whistle, Balser ready. Takes it, and Balser scores, it's 2-1. 
from the spot, just steps up with so much precision and composure, puts it in the side net, approaches this ball so calmly, opens up, uses the inside of her foot, places it past Murphy. Houston really starting the second half on the front foot, Alozia. Dancing around with this two different colored boots she likes to wear. Patterson back on it, crosses in front of the goal, headed away, had to be. Now the follow-up! What a shot, Yuki! They've been pushing down this right-hand side with Michelle Alozier. She's been causing problems. This time it comes out. Yeah, to Avery Patterson, ball up, cleared. But look at this, from the edge of the box. Wow, look at Claudia Dickey. If you want to see how difficult this for the keep, she doesn't even move. She's like, really? There's no way you can put that in the top corner. That's exactly what Yuki does. Great strike. First goal of the regular season for Yuki. Malum, B. Franklin. Now across from Chicago, rising for it, Ludmila scores! Her first goal in the NWSL, and the Red Stars off to a hot start. It's a little combination play between those three. They find Anderson free, and with a little peek up, she finds that there is space at the back post. An oncoming Ludmila, who times it just right. Her patience here to wait until the ball dips, find herself in that space, beating Pearl Mar Maroney. It's a great header right at the feet of Sheridan. So difficult for a goalkeeper to get anything on that when it comes low and it bounces right in front of them. That is a great header by Ludmila and exactly what Chicago want here at home. A one to nothing lead early in the match. Next to Zornoza in the midfield today. Some shifting around based on availability. Utah also missing Ana Tejada due to yellow card accumulation. Williams onto it now for Gotham. Esther goes right back to Williams. The gold medalist for the U.S. lays it across and a goal! Yasmin Ryan! All the hands are up for offside. I have a feeling this one was just a little bit liberal in place, a little bit too soon here. Potentially, they'd have to look centrally as well. It's very close. Lynn does a fantastic job of putting this into that danger area. You can see three or four players have got from their seed lining up. Yasmin Ryan coming in from that right-hand side, a real versatile player that can play anywhere along the front, has played everywhere, even one Carlos Samuel said, everywhere apart from in goal. She will do a job to a really high standard. Really good start from Gotham FC, and exactly what they can do. Lynn Williams picks her head up. And certainly concerning if you're Utah, seeing that ball go all the way across in front of the goal, and there were several targets there. An Angel City team in this position last year in terms of must-win situations, had to fight, scrap to get results, to get themselves into that first playoff game. Very different for the Portland Thorns, who's used to winning. Melissa Thompson going in on goal. Thompson! This is where Angel City's at their best. This is where Alyssa Thompson is at their best. Wonderful step, reading of the play from Curry. Then you get on the half turn, and once again, it's Megan Yuhori Howard playing that final pass, but Alyssa Thompson in the wide area, taking on 1v1, gets a little bit of help from the inside of that post, but what an excellent finish that is. Arnold screened by defenders, the decisiveness. We've talked about her form coming into this game. Four goals in the last four games. We'll make it five now because that is an excellent start for Alyssa Thompson in Angel City. Well, just if we continue to establish possession, then can we get more out of it? St. Clair. Slips it through, Morgan Weaver! We're all level as Portland Thorns have tied this up. Morgan Weaver has got her second goal of the season. Well, as I was saying, if you can establish just a little bit of rhythm, possession, and then you can get these opportunities. As Sinclair talked about her importance in terms of helping establish some of that rhythm, orchestrating the attack, but it's a wonderful little combination play. You get Mueller higher up the field because Sinclair has played between the lines. That allows for the runs to develop, and then Weaver always looking to play. That's caused so many problems, have numbers going forward, have lost her way a little bit in that area. Hubley sends it across, falls to Moultrie, Moultrie! 
Well, the reoccurring theme that we consistently talked about in the first half was establishing width for this Portland Thorns team. Well, that's where that ball comes from. Hubbley, one of your center backs, able to get forward because you create a little bit of possession, and then that's a beautiful ball in, served. But no one at any time is marking Olivia Moultrie. Just too easy. you got three defenders, two attackers, but it lands to Moultrie, takes it so well to get it down, readjusts her feet, just fires it to that near post. Only as far as Spencer. Spencer driving in line, gets pass, obeys. Spencer! equalizer. Emsley with her seventh goal of the season and Laura you could feel it coming. Yeah exactly it took the words right out of my mouth. You felt the urgency good shape to be able to keep this alive. Well done from Jasmine Spencer to go in line be direct bypass obeys but really Arnold's got to be doing better with that. Get some fingers on him loses sight of it slips right through her hands gives Emsley a chance. She finds the back of the net plus herself finds the back of the net and it's level 2-2.